Hey guys, welcome back. Today, I'm gonna go over my kayak. I've had a lot of requests and a lot of questions on my kayak. So today I'm gonna go over the kayak, what you get stuck, and what I have added on to my kayak. And for all my updates for my kayak, I'm gonna, um, I'll flash it on the screen what I got. So all your questions after this video should be answered. And if you're not already, what are you doing? Give the video a thumbs up, make sure you subscribe to the channel. The kayak stock, it's a wonderful kayak. I think it's the best fishing platform for 2022, 2023. It's 14 feet in change. I will put the specs here for you guys to go over. Um, mine has the 360 drive on it, so I can manipulate the drive of the um, fins, I guess you call them, from a little handle on the side. And there's a little arrow at the base of the pedals, and it will show you which direction your drive is gonna take you. And you can manipulate the drive along with the rudder, and you can get this thing to spin on a dime. The front hatch on the Hobie Pro Angler the 14 is absolutely massive. It is so big, I don't know what to do with all this space. I put everything in there and I still have space. I just cannot seem to fill this thing up. So it's, it's. I mean, even on the on the Pro Angler 12, it's, it's substantial space. The main difference from the 12 to the 14 is on the 12, I believe you only get four rod holders. On the 14, you get six. And the front storage hatch space is smaller on the 12 than the 14, it, substantially. But it's huge, it's a tank. Man, this I tell my friends my, my kayak is a barge on water in my kayak I chose the Tim Percy's mount. There's a bunch of different options now I know one objective makes a mount very similar, but Tim Percy he was like the OG at this to my knowledge So I picked this mount up pretty quickly when I saw it, it was a no-brainer to me to mount all my stuff so on my mount I have my NEMA system which connects to my steady cast. And the steady cast is basically just, you know, your your GPS coordinates. So it'll show you the front of your boat. So if you have an item marked, you could line up to make that perfect cast at whatever angle you want to make that cast from. It, for offshore fishing, it it's it's a must have, let's be real. And the NEMA gives you the ability to hook up live scope if that's the route you were planning to go as well. On top of that, I also have a Dakota Lithium 20 amp charger, so I don't have to you know, connect to the nipples of my battery every time I just plug in the extension cord to the front and I'm good to go. I run a 32 amp hour Ionic battery. I love Ionic batteries. I love the Bluetooth capability. I can check right on my phone, how charged it is. I know what I got going on. I also have Yak Power. And connected to my Yak Power, I have my front lights, my red and my green light. I have my interior lights, which I have four of. I have two in the front and two in the back, like under my seat that shine forward. And then I have my Garmin, my graph on that as well. And then in time, I will connect my live scope so I don't have to continuously run my live scope because that sucks a lot of juice. And then I'll probably, you know, when, when I when I do that in a month or so, I'll probably have to um, add another battery. I'll run them in parallel or something. For my graph, I'm running a 106, so a 10-inch 106 SV Ultra by Garmin. And the way I mounted this was I got, I believe it's the 32 inch H rail and I mounted it to the sides of the black plastic in the front. A lot of people ask me this. The 106 Garmin is a heavy unit. So what I had to do was I had to get two of the Hobie mounting plates to support the weight. And it does a pretty dang good job, it don't move. But it is a lot of weight, and those mounting brackets by Hobie, I believe, are like 30 bucks a piece, so they're not cheap by any means. But they are worth it if that's the way you are planning to mount your unit. I recently added under seat storage. For the longest time, I couldn't figure out what to put under my seat. It was just useless space. I was on Amazon and I saw that DeWalt T-Stack and it was relatively cheap. I want to say it was like 50 or $60. Two pull-out drawers and they have little 
um, like, I don't know, they're, they're locking drawers, you know? Um, so they only just pull out if you're transporting. But the top, I keep baits that I'm gonna use for the day on the water, like my go-to baits. So if I need to retie something on real quick, I got it in that top drawer. Or if I need something like scissors or braid cuts or super glue, marker, fish scent, whatever. I got that in my bottom drawer, which allows me to take virtually nothing in my black pack in the back. So in my black pack in the back, all I keep in there is really my terminal tackle and maybe one other 3700 and that's it. it. It allows me a bunch of storage. You know, typically, I mean, this time of year it's winter, so I'll keep like a rain jacket or my bibs or camera gear. I travel light now. I mean, it's really nice. I'm, it's one of the best purchases I've done since I've had the kayak. It's, it's an essential. The bump board, the bump board mount. I got those at Kayak City up in, uh, or is that Folsom, Auburn, California? I'll see if I can go on their website. If I can find it, it's posted right here. Um, they were like $45 or something, but super convenient. They post right to my A-Trail, allowing me to keep my bump board, you know, secure on the side. I transport with it. It doesn't come out. There's two little elastic things that strap over it, so I just make the elastic have a lot of tension in it. Th that bump board don't go anywhere, and I cruise on the freeway all the time, long distance. That thing does not move at all. Behind that bump board, you notice I have that green leash. That is the Cal Coast Donkey Clip, and that allows me to basically clip a fish, drop it back in the water, let it chill out, do its thing. Maybe I wanna take a picture. Pull that fish back up, release the clip, get my picture. Um, it's super nice to have because sometimes, you know, you catch a fish, you're not ready for that fish. Maybe it's the first cast of the day, maybe it's the last cast of the day. It, stuff happens and it happens to me all the time where I'm just, I'm not prepared. Where's, I, I don't know where anything is. I'm like, I, cause just, I'm not ready. So clip that fish, drop it back in the water. <sighs> pull myself together and then handle my business. I'm also running a Yeti. I had a Burley Pro Orb in the back and I took that off, plastic welded the hole, and then I pushed my crate back to make room for that Yeti. The Yeti for me is a must have because I like to stay hydrated on the water. I'm I like to munch, you know, I have super fast metabolism, so I'm always trying to refuel. You know, I pack sandwiches, snacks, cliff bars, yada yada yada, apples, bananas. Maybe not so much bananas, but it was an apple. But I'm always eating on the water, so that Yeti is essential for me, and it will be very essential come the warmer months where it's 100 plus degrees out here in Northern California. I got a Black Pack Pro. That sounds fun to say. It's a 16 inch by 16 inch. I have three rod holders on each side and two in the back. The way I typically do this, and, and by the way, you could put four on each side, and I was gonna do that, the problem with that is they are too close together and when you pull rods out, your reels will bump and for me, I just didn't want one to fall in the water. So I chose to go three on each side, two in the back. And the way I typically run this is, you know, I'll keep um, bottom baits like jigs, worms, just slower stuff that I'm gonna fish on one side and moving baits on the other side and my finesse, my two spinning rods, I'll keep in the far back. That way I'm fairly organized and I know where I'm reaching when I am reaching. I'm not just, everything's all, you know, I'm very OCD. I have to have my things in very particular order. In order to get my Black Pro, my Black Pack Pro pushed to the back, I needed to relocate my Torquedo battery. So I had to go online and purchase an extension cable and it was like 80 bucks I wanna say. I wasn't happy about it. And it's like a four foot long cable, which allowed me to relocate my battery from the back of my old H crate to where it is now. It sits behind my, um, my pullout drawers. So that's great. It allows me to push everything back in my kayak and it, it freed up another foot and a half of space for me to allow the black pack back and the Yeti in. And you notice I have the landing gear now. That was a pain in the butt to install. That was a two person job. There was a lot of swearing involved. I've owned bass boats and running wires in a bass boat was far easier than installing this landing gear was. Maybe it's different on different kayaks, but on the Hobie, the Pro Angler, it sucked. I mean, I'm not a big guy. I'm like 5'8", 150, 160. I don't have the longest reach, but it was, it, I almost gave up. I, if, if I had not already drilled holes, I would have gave up and sent that back. But I'm glad I didn't because it works great. And a lot of people ask me, hey, can it hold up weight? Like I, the Pro Angler is a heavy kayak 
and I load my stuff up pretty heavy sometimes, especially with my Torquedo and all this, yes, it can hold up. I wheel mine down the ramp with everything on my kayak, including my Torquedo, and it holds up. I mean, I'm not bashing it and, you know, I'm going slow, taking my time. So far, so good. Doesn't concern me. It's not flexing. It's good. It's anybody wondering about that. It can handle the weight of the Pro Angler loaded down. For my camera setup, my rear camera setup, I'm using the Ram mount, the long one. I'll put it on the screen for you guys right here. And it's been a fantastic, fantastic. I have that directly connected to my camera. It runs down the pole and right down there, I have a USB port which is run off a Knock Aqua 10 amp hour. Just one of those little square ones, you know? And that goes for two days for me. For the GoPro, the, the rear. And, you know, I turn that thing on in the morning and I just let it continuously run. And then if I'm running my chest camera, I'll just, I'll turn that guy on when I get to my spots and I'm good to go. It makes recording a lot easier. I am running a Torquedo 1103. A lot of people ask me, how do you steer your Torquedo 1103? I'll tell you how to do that. There's a pin that drops on the top, that locks it in place, okay? And I only use my Torquedo on long runs. I'll throttle up, I'll probably throttle to 60, 70%, and then I will steer myself with my rudder and my drive. I'm sure it's not recommended by Hobie I do that, and I'm sure in time my drive will break. But for right now, I'm taking it easy and it seems to be working for me. Um, I thought about doing the foot pedals. I really didn't want to take up the space inside because I stand up and I fish. I cannot fish for my seat for the life of me. It just does, it feels unnatural. Attached to my Torquedo 1103, I have two plates. Both are by Innovative Sportsman. One is a mounting bracket that goes directly to the Hobie. It is aluminum. It is painted black. It looks nice. It is expensive. It is posted right here for you guys. The second is a mount, I can't remember what it's called, but it's posted right here. That connects to the first mount, which connects directly to the Torquedo. This mount also gives you the ability to post up a power pole on it. That was one of the reasons I purchased it. On top of that, I also have a aluminum steering triangle on my kayak because the ones from Torquedo will break on you. They are horribly made. Mine broke so fast. Just the torque of the motor in the water, it just, it snaps. It's a thin piece of plastic right there. It's, I'll pop that up on the screen right here. That's also by Innovative Sportsman. At the bottom of my Torquedo, I have a rock guard on there. And I'll tell you what, if I didn't have that rock guard, I'd be on my second Torquedo by now. That thing has saved my life so many times. It is worth its weight in gold. And anybody that has a Torquedo needs one of these because Man, I would be donezo without this thing. So guys, that's a quick rundown of my kayak and my setup. I'm probably forgetting some stuff, 90% of what I got on. What am I planning on adding on in 2023? Well, I got an LV34 coming in. I'm probably gonna have to add another battery for that. So I'll probably add another, I'll probably add another 32 amp hour battery, which I'll run in parallel. I'll probably add a power bowl because I tried the Anchor Wizard and it works for what it is, but it's, it's just too much. It's, it's a hassle. And you know, I was gonna put a front trolling motor on, but I really don't wanna add the weight. I don't wanna lose the HPs of my Torquedo. And I don't know, it just seems like overkill. So probably gonna go with a power pole in the back and just use the longest spike I can get. So if you guys have any other questions regarding my kayak or my setup, drop me a comment down below or feel free to um, shoot me a message on Instagram. I'll pop my Instagram right here. Just shoot me a message, I reply to everyone. I get a ton of messages on Instagram asking about kayak setups, this and that. I'm good, I'll reply to you, I'm pretty quick. So thank you guys for watching, and if you're not already, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thanks guys, until next time.